this video. Um, I'm stick around. I'm going to do the uh, Kill Peace Strategy Discord Q and A just tacked on to this video. Um, and we're going to do a game of classic fixed because it will let me just chat with you guys and uh, and uh, answer the questions in a leisurely pace. Um, I think for those who aren't interested in the Q&A, that is the end of the practice video. But I'm obviously going to do a bunch more practice because I need to do my very best to try and hope to play against Marin Brombat. So. We're going to go into a game of classic fixed as usual all are welcome nothing fancy and we will do the if you've played today though please sit out so that we can uh we can let more folks in the chat um play with me guys i'm looking at you platon parlox and spud you know i'd love to play with you but let's get more folks a chance to uh to join in okay please and thank you and I'm just going to bring up the questions and we'll do the Q. Well, shit, you know, come on, Spud. You know, I'd love to play with you a million times. Over. I did leave your game earlier. Unfair. Fair enough. Fair enough. It wasn't your fault. You didn't start the card skipping. Okay. Um, that will be, that will be a hard rule though. I don't care if I leave games, but we'll, we'll, we'll keep you for now. I'm not going to kick you out. I hate kicking people too. Like, just give me eight slots. Give me 10 slots, right? Why not? Hey Pete, do I know what a 68 is? Oh no, oh no. I feel like this is a bad joke. Do I know what it's one less than a 69, right? Right? What is it? What is it? Yeah, um, and we are. Kill be strategy discord Q and A questions. Let's start where we left off last week. Um, where was I last week? What was the last thing that I finished on? Internet anonymity, I think, was the final question. So we're going to start with, uh, Berserker asks, Pete, what is your favorite European map? Well, if European, I'm a poopin', right? Uh, what is my favorite European map? I think I did answer this. Hold on. We got to find out where we left off. Um, Okay, hey Pete, I know you say that you want a redesign of the political and justice system, perhaps some more also. I know you're not an advocate of countries and nations. Would you like to have a globally agreed system? I don't see it as a matter of like. I see it as a matter of need. I think we need a globally agreed system. Otherwise, we're fucked. Um, let me read the second part of your question. Do you think it's possible to create a fair system for 10 plus billion people within the next coming hundred years? Uh, first half of the sentence, yes. Second half of the sentence, no. I think it is possible to create. I don't think it's possible to do in a century. I don't think that gives us quite enough time for this. Where the fuck am I going? I think I'm, I got the North Am play, right? Nothing play is fine by me. Okay. Um, I don't think the current system is great. This is Mu Rutan speaking. I don't think the current system is great, but I do believe small incremental changes are better than a complete redesign. Otherwise, it would take too long before we reach a steady state and get meaningful laws. You and I don't disagree fundamentally. The place I am looking at it from is we are currently in a situation that is unacceptably bad. So the reason I am so loud about redesign and so insistent and so stubborn is that I am trying to get the zeitgeist, the base level understanding of, of, of you, who I am speaking with, um, to a place where we at least agree that the current system is just unacceptable. And that floor, because we have been so propagandized, we've been so indoctrinated into believing um, that we are free because we're told we are free to choose be between these two idiot non-options that don't matter. Um, because we are so sold, bought and sold, we're so fully mentally enslaved, getting people to a base level where they 
simply agree that where we're at is unacceptable is the minimum standard that I'm starting at. Let's move on. Hey, Pete, who are your favorite commanders in Magic the Gathering? I am two years out of date. My best commander is Karn Silver Golem. So I built a deck that was, uh, the whole idea was, how do I work with the most limited card pool, right? In Commander, you have, um, your deck can be the color identity of the colors of your commander. Um, so I have a four color deck with, with Timna and Krom. That's my favorite deck. So it's four color, no green. So how do you fix four color without green? But even harder is how do you come up with the best combination of cards with the most limited possible options? And that's why I like colorless the most. Who is, what is your favorite type of food? Chinese, Mexican, pass. We feel like it's, a, it's definitely not a personal question. I love food. Um, my favorite type of food is probably Chinese food or sushi. Um, and what else can I say about that? My very, very favorite food though is crab's legs. So I like steak. I like a good piece of meat, but uh, crab's legs or anything seafood. I absolutely love. Okay. Um, that question doesn't make any sense. What do you think the correct move to Ukraine would be if they got invaded? If it was risk, <laughs> should he pull the stack back? I unfortunately think this joke is in bad taste. So we, we, we have to recognize that people at war are suffering and we probably shouldn't be making too, too much fun about. While it is a strategy game, let's have some compassion for folks who are losing their home or fighting for their home. Yes. Uh, Mary shag and kill the last three American presidents. Okay. So we got, we got smiling Joe Biden. We got Barack Obama. We got the one and only the, the, the jabroni himself. Um, I would kill Donald Trump. Um, now, who would I rather? I'd bang Biden, and I'd marry I'd marry Obama. That's that's my that's my answer. And we're not going to qualify any of those conclusions. <laughs> Do I support legalizing weed? Yeah, man. Well, le weed is already legal in Canada, so <laughs> I support something that has already happened. Um. Maui says perfect answer. Yeah, thanks, dude. <laughs> oh man. Um, what's next? Uh what is your take on current European politics with the right rising? I think any time the question is asked like this with the loaded polar eyes, right? The right is rising. Watch out for the right. You have fallen for the magician's trick. The assumption that our problems are not systemically originated and our problems are somehow based on us versus them dichotomies. I just don't buy it, guys. I don't think the right is significantly different from the left to be worthy of discussion. I think the situation we find ourselves in is the rich are fully enslaving us, and we need to figure out how to design systems to mitigate that and to fairly distribute resources. Okay. Um, what do you think of SMG's announcement on Discord dated 23 September dev Q&A feedback with it? I don't know. What is the announcement? Link me. Uh, I, in turn, would like to know, would you ever consider doing a meet and greet at some point, like at a convention? Sure. If it's something you guys would want to meet me, just to see the, the human behind the show, I'm not opposed to it. I've, I've been reticent to fully embrace the celebrity associated with this work, um, for obvious reasons. Um, but seeing as how it has become inevitable, I now seek to control it and address it rather than ignore it. So... Let's just be reasonable about that. And yeah, I'm happy to meet people. I'm happy to connect with you in the ways that I'm able to, right? My time is quite limited, but that doesn't mean that I am not available to you folks. Interesting move. You see the Africa take. Okay.
I mean, if nobody wants it. Those dice were decent, eh? Okay. Um, Hispanerd would like to know, besides Risk, what board game would you consider going competitively into? I like Magic. Um, not technically a board game. I like Catan, but I don't love Catan. There aren't a ton of other board games that work competitively. Like, I would like to check out D&D um, &D at some point if I had time. But... I don't think there are other board games that necessarily jump out to me as what I would want. Okay. Um, Dark Trickster would like to know, Hi, Pete. It would be nice to hear some input on how you handle the stress of being suicided into, especially with games that last an hour or two. So I think the implication that it's stressful tells me a lot about you. Um, the very, very best thing I ever heard on this subject was from Phil, and I don't know if Phil is still in the chat, but I'm going to shout him out because the way he put it was perfect. He's like, you can't expect to win every game, and you can't expect, and you should expect that your opponents are going to slam into you at some point because they're trying to win. So when you set it up in that way and you have that built in as an expectation, it changes the whole outlook because when you get slammed into, you're not surprised or disappointed. It, because you accept it as, as more inevitable, right? So if you just accept that, that bad shit's going to happen to you in the game and when it happens, instead of feeling stressed about it, you notice, oh, the thing happened. What am I going to do about it? Turn it back to the strategy, right? There's there's two ways we can respond to uh, stimulus. We can respond. We can respond with an emotion. We can we can respond with a rational voice. And and the way you can mitigate your emotions in this game. And I'm one to talk, right? Because I'm a super emotional player. The way you can mitigate your emotions in this game um, are are very key to being that calculating grandmaster that you might aspire to be. All right, Truth Powers would like to know, what would you call this year if you had to give it a name? Well, this year has been a very significant one for me. Um, blossoming, it would be the word I would use. I feel like I have fully moved into my actualization in 2022 which is lovely because i spent so much of my life hiding from myself and the more i give the more i get so why wouldn't i want to just shine as brightly as i can to all of you um all right Alex says why do you take drugs do you think this is a good thing for you so i am a passionate advocate of psychedelic use for uh, mental health reasons for self-actualization for discovering <clears throat> and seeing a perspective on myself that i can't know in any other way caveat here is the show is for entertainment purposes so i am not advocating that anyone use drugs ask a doctor your results may vary right this is i'm not a doctor i'm not pretending to be one so don't take anything i say as medical advice this is an entertainment product treated as such. That caveat given, Parlox leads with the question, why do you take drugs? Which I think is an unfair question in the sense that the word safety first gives exactly. And thank you, an anonymous gifter. I appreciate the anonymous support. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, why do you take drugs is a loaded question because it implies something about drugs that I don't necessarily feel satisfies right it, it classes them all in the same category drugs can be very different from each other certain things like stimulants are useful in small amounts i consume caffeine regularly and am very addicted to it um i consume 
cannabis very seldom, and it's just not my flavor of substance. I consume alcohol a bit more frequently than I should, but I really like it. I used to love nicotine, but I just understand that, one, it's hyper-addictive, and two, it does not exemplify the man I would want to be. The stimulants like methamphetamine or cocaine I have avoided my entire life and have no plans on engaging with because I know how risky it would be for me to mess around with things like that. Other things can be considered drugs too. Sugar, right? You can be addicted to food. We can be addicted to pornography. There's all sorts of things that we can get very attached to. Um, so it's important to bear in mind that not all drugs are created equal. So in this specific case, I think Parlox is asking, and not to put words in your mouth, I think Parlox is asking about psychedelics. And to that I would say, I believe that I have made some important life-altering decisions via the use of psychedelics. I believe they have been exclusively a benefit to my life. I have been able to essentially cure a lifelong chronic depression using non-pharmaceutical drugs. So that was a long-winded answer to your question. And yes, I absolutely do think it's a good thing for me. Okay. XC Dude says, hey, Pete, what gives you joy? Great question. Joy was very elusive to me as a concept for a long time. There are a few things that we can look at and say, without a doubt, these bring us joy. I kind of have a, so I have a theory on physical health, right, that I have iterated on this show. Physical health is the harmony of um, strength, endurance, flexibility, balance, flexibility, diet, sleep, and meditation, right? I think of as mental health as the corollary um, of physical health, love, sex, family, friendship, right? Because your mental health requires other people. I don't know too, too many people that are happy and alone, right? No man is an island, as they say. Um, so I think, I think integrating the concept of other people into your being um, is the way that humans actualize. And, and that is another long-winded way of saying what gives you, me joy. What gives me joy? Love, sex, family, friendship, being physically healthy, and discipline. Um, knowing that I'm on the path to the man I, I seek to become, walking that path, and then seeing incremental uh, achievements on that path. Uh, Truth Powers would like to know what are two or three truths about the world which you ground most of your beliefs slash way of life. Um, so Truth and I spoke about this and he now knows that I don't love to use that word. I don't really use the word truth to describe reality. I think it's too loaded um, so I prefer to, my view of, of, my view of reality is a best fit model. I take a pure scientific method approach and say, what does this look like? What does this world likely tell me based on the information I have available to me? Because we can never know. We can never know anything for sure. I have a feeling white wants North America, but I'm not sure. What do you guys think? Just a hunch. So given that I don't, I, I didn't actually answer any of his questions. What are two or three truths about the world which you ground most of your beliefs? Okay. So we're talking about belief. So I would never use the word truth to correlate with belief. Whenever you use the word belief, there is an inherent element of faith associated with your belief. And I love that word because it shows my level of skepticism. I am unsure about anything being true. 
but I have beliefs based on information that I use to say, well, I have faith that the sun will rise tomorrow, but I can't be sure, something like that. So what are some of the truths about the world that I ground my beliefs on? I think of, oh, we're killing purple. How, though? We're feeding the purple kill to green. That's dangerous, man. Five cards for seven? Why would you do that? Oofa. Oofa. We're going to lose two people right now. <laughs> We're going to be in a four-player game right away. Hey. Yeah, I know, right? Yep. And green kills magenta. Or doesn't or fucks around and pretends like he's not gonna um so my first my, my core values are time freedom peace joy and skepticism so i i value my time your time is not replaceable so i i place a very high priority on on getting the max utility out of my time whenever possible um what else can i say Freedom. I believe freedom is not negotiable. I think the minimum standard we can ask of ourselves is to be free. To be free to choose, to feel like you are the architect of your destiny. Okay. Well, this game doesn't make any sense, but I will play it to the best of my ability. So what did I get to? We got time. Your time is limited. Non-renewable resource. Maximize the utility of it. We got freedom. If you are not free, you are not anything. Um, joy, we spoke about. How do you seek joy? How do you come to a place in your life where you live joyfully and you are on the path to actualization? Um, time, freedom, peace. How do you how do you live in the moment in a way that you are whole and complete without anything, just accepting yourself, loving yourself, and loving others? And I, I don't actually see much of a distinction. In the same way that I don't make a distinction between mind and body, I don't really make a distinction between loving oneself and loving all other humans. Um, yeah. Those are my beliefs. And then discipline, right? The the loving yourself enough to be kind to yourself, to keep yourself on that path, to be pro making progress in the things that you want to be making progress towards. Okay. Commander Guy 3001 would like to know, I know you'd love to redesign the whole political social system, but if you only had to redesign currency for the whole world, what would it look like? Um, the currency doesn't matter as much as the way I would approach this problem is um, I'm just get a card. The Financial sector cannot be privately owned. It doesn't make sense. Why would we allow money, which is useful as a means of exchange, to have parasites within it to siphon bits of its value out over time? It just is illogical. And from that perspective, the currency doesn't matter. All currency is is an agreed upon means of exchange. The problem with the entire finance question is we cannot allow people the ability 
to be parasites on that structure. So how do we build a currency that is only a fair means of exchange and not one that other people have the ability to exploit? Because you see the tallest building in every city is banks and insurance companies. I want to bet. I want to make uh, investments that will never fail. Banks and insurance companies, right? There's no reason for me to make any risks. There's no reason for me to add any value to society. All I have to do is own pieces of these parasitic structures and I become wealthy. Obviously, you have to work. You have to get the alpha, right? You have to get enough money in the first place to be able to afford to have a surplus, not be in debt. And debt slavery is growing to more and more people fall victim to being in debt forever because they just have the, the cost of living is so high and they don't have the discipline to avoid being in debt forever. Okay, that answers that question to my satisfaction. Parlox would like to know, this is a tough one. Um, it's a fun show, but I do not shy away from answering the tough question. So I think I'll answer this one briefly. What is the best way to deal with pedophiles? How should people who are attracted to children deal with their feelings without causing harm? As much as I am interested in destigmatizing conversations around mental health, harm towards children needs to be treated as the most unacceptable thing we can think of. And those who would cause harm to children must be treated as completely unacceptable. I would suggest we remove these people from society until we are certain that they will no longer be at risk of causing harm to children. And that's all I'd like to say about that for the moment. A tremendous amount of empathy for the victims of these types of crimes. Deepest Toaster would like to ask, this is intended extremely respectfully. I think I recall it being a great question, so I don't even understand why he leads with this is intended extremely respectfully. Um, do you see the hypocrisy of championing championing individual autonomy while implying criticism for people to choosing to wear masks in their own cars alone? No, I don't see hypocrisy at all. It's a great question, though. I love it. So no, no disrespect uh, detected. For context, this came up in a recent video. Can I pull up the exact clip of that helps? There's so many reasons why people might choose this, chief among them, laziness slash efficiency slash depending on how you want to spin it. Personally, I've done this between stores on occasion, primarily because of laziness with a small amount of impact coming from the knowledge that each touch of the mask increases contamination from the hands, though mostly from laziness. All right. Excellent, excellent question. No, I see absolutely no discrepancy between my personal championing of an individual's, I don't like to use the right, the word right, um, of an individual's informed decision to do something that's dumb and makes no sense, right? I fully, fully support your decision, your autonomy to do things that make no sense or are stupid, right? If you want to if you want to be logically inconsistent, if you want to be lazy, I fully support your right to do so. I don't feel I need to treat that with respect or admiration. That's that's how I I am a champion of autonomy. You should be free to be as stupid as you'd like. That's my answer. Hey, Reg! Reg's like, well, that was a controversial take. Hey, buddy. What? Hey, you want to help me with the classic fix game? How do we get out of the four-player scenario? Yeah, okay, let me ask you this, Reg. If you had to go to the store and purchase yourself some cat food, um, would you put a mask on your little cat face? You would, because you're worried about COVID? Oh no, because you have horrible breath because he eats cat food. That's the reason. You're just looking out for other people. There's a ton of reasons why people make decisions. This is not a discrepancy between freedom and autonomy. 
I think you should be free to make your choices. And you should be free to accept the criticism of those choices by others. And that is my answer to your question. It was a great question. The Little Midget would like to know how long have I been playing Risk? I've been playing Risk about 30 years. Uh, Corruption would like to know, does anyone know how to continue watching a game after you get defeated? I can't seem to figure it out. Go into the main menu. When you get defeated, there's a little eyeball in the bottom left corner, which is how you spectate. Okay, so White wins this game. Unless... Black's doing 69s all over Africa. What? All right, I just got to go pee. Maybe play your turns a bit slower, please. <laughs> Thank you, gentlemen. Much appreciated. What a relief it is. Okay, when do I stream generally? Come on down to my Twitch, click the schedule button, and you will find my schedule posted for the next stream. Mallory would like to know, Hi, Pete. One of the things I like most about your content is how much you push and portray positive masculinity. Can you talk more about the importance of having a positive male role model who is yours or was? Side note, I'm actually trying to get my brother to watch your content because I really think you'd have a positive effect on him. Keep up the good work. Yeah, man. Absolutely. This is a super important thing to pay attention to. Um, we seem to lack healthy male role models in our culture. Which fucking sucks. Like, I can't express enough how scary it is to witness what I can only describe as a decline of a healthy culture into a decadent dying empire, however you want to look at it. I'm, we are watching the end of Rome, right? The Pax Americana fall. And one of the ways... Um, we are watching it is not upholding our own ideals. So part of what I think exemplifies me, part of what I think my show adds to some of you, the viewer, is that I seek to embody a healthy, heroic male ideal right one of wisdom one of kindness one of strength um i don't need to always win but i want to win i also want you to win so healthy competition all of these things that we think of as being you know and, and, and again i don't i don't need to put my foot in my mouth about what the exemplar of the masculine ideal is versus the reality everyone exists on a spectrum um but for me, my father was 
a psychologically healthy adult man and his influence is felt he means a lot to me i love him i absolutely absolutely love him and i was actually thinking about because he's as surprised as i am that the show is is successful at all or as popular as it is so um i think i'm gonna get him on the show we're gonna do uh uh, waiting on your best behavior podcast with pete's dad and you'll get to meet the influence right being a man is the opposite of toxic what a horribly regressive psychologically damaged and damaging ideology to use the word toxic masculinity how insulting i believe in the exact opposite right i'm trying to embody a positive this is what a a positive loving healthy hopefully sometimes wise man looks like and i think my, in my quest to hope to try to embody that my work resonates with you and not just men right i think it resonates with women too yin and yang there is beauty in the um in the harmony we are incomplete in some fundamental way without each other. There's my answer. Okay. Um, I'm not sure what that one is. Razor Dog would like to know, what is your favorite vegetable and why? Describe in 50 words or less how this particular vegetable has significantly impacted your life. Look forward to hearing your response. We'll ask about fruit next week. Uh, my favorite vegetable is broccoli. Uh, I love broccoli. I like the crunch. Um, what else can I tell you about broccoli? I like the texture of, of the head. I like to, when I make broccoli, I like to juxtapose it with um, mushrooms. You get like a soft texture and a bit of a harder texture, a little bit of the umami thing. Sweet's good too. Okay, we try to go 12 and 12, but he says no. All right, and what do we have next? How much wood would wood chuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood? Uh, 30, 30 wood. 30 woods would be chucked. This key would like to know, do you believe that everything happens for a reason and that life is predetermined from the moment we are born uh, and that no matter what we do, we can't stop fate? I don't know. It's a question I ask myself a lot. So what depends here is how much um, you are interested in physical science. Because... There are different interpretations of physics that say, you know, quantum superposition or multiple universes theory, but the, the dumb basic approach to physics is you take all of the atoms and molecules that started moving at the beginning of time, the big bang, and you, you apply the laws of physics to them and then they move according to those laws from then until now. And we know our brains are energetic. We are a pattern of energy, which is the software running on a meat computer. Um, and that runs our body. So the laws of physics would also apply to the electrical decision-making process we have in our brains. And if that is all true, then everything that ever happened ever will happen or ever could happen is governed by these laws. So if you accept that logical chain, what you end up with is determinism, right? You have your destiny and you can't know what it is, but it is predetermined and it is the way it is. And that is the story forever. So you guys can take that for what it is. Um, at some point there is a belief system there that is applied. We don't need to look at all the 69s on this board. We don't need to say for sure, but personally, yeah, I believe that um, 
my destiny is fixed, and I think the thing that gives my life beauty is the fact that it ends, and the fact that I don't know when. But yeah, I absolutely feel like I am meant to be here right now having this conversation with you guys, and it was always going to be this way. Uh, Crackle would like to know, do you see future tournaments at least on the main server as being as big or bigger than the current one? Oh yeah, we're going to keep going, man. There's no reason that this needs to stop, as far as I can tell. Let's keep on keeping on, guys. I'm very interested to see the future of competitive risk grow. I'm extremely passionate to try and um, build this up. Yeah, we have the Risk Legends tournament going now. So we have the World Championships on the main server. We have the Risk Legends tournament on Spud server. Um, one after the other, after the other, after the other. We're going to have an, an ongoing season. So I will always be doing the promos for when the new tournament signups are open. We're going to be doing the GM tournament in the uh, Risk Grandmasters Arena. Um so I'm, I'm motivated to continue to broadcast and support and uplift competitive risk and obviously all the other streamers who continue to make this content, all of you guys. Um, we're all uh, ships on a raising tide. We're all building up our project together. Something that it's really nice to see. Risk has given me so so much more than i've uh than i've given it and i'm very curious to give more and see how far we can take this i have no doubt in my mind that risk can be bigger than chess i think it's just more accept more accessible to the average person yeah well, uh, black hits a nine sure okay um crackle would, or that was crackle's question Oh, sorry, the, the, the second part of the question. What, if any, is the solution to preventing a high number of no-shows, both in the first round, once a player is running to make the first cut? I don't think we need to worry about preventing no-shows. I think we need to just do our best um, to accept that some amount of them are inevitable and design good settings despite it. That's all. Losing troops at this point, right? Uh, Alpha Triari. Dogs, cats, or lions? Which ones are cats? I love lions. If I could have a domesticated lion that wouldn't eat me for dinner, I'd probably have a huge fucking cat. But I'm a very much cat guy, in case y'all didn't know. I love my cats, so. Very much so. XC Dude would like to know, what are the qualifications for an individual being interviewed by you on your waiting on your best behavior podcast? No hard line. I Do I want to talk to you? Do I want to get to know you? That's it. Um, typically, guests have been risk- content producers and tournament winners slash top ranked players so the same uh qualifications that would get you a blue tick in the game pretty much if you're a verified person if you're a real boy i'm happy to get to know people and talk to them about the game we all love Rue 13 would like to know, how mad would you be if you missed out on the next round of the tournament by one point asking for a friend? Dude, there's every chance I miss out by two points because I gave two points up in round three. And I'm still cheesed about it, but it was my own bad. So there we have it. The final question by Platon. What is the atomic number of germanium? Ah, uh, the atomic number... Uh, germanium without searching. Uh, my wild guess is 83. Let's see how close they are. 32. Not even close. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. That is the end of the Kill Pete Strategy Discord Q&A for this week. Uh, get your questions in for next week. 
And we'll, we're doing them on Mondays. Thank you, Croyster, for the sub. Thank you, Spud. I appreciate you guys. I appreciate your support. Thank you so much. Thera Ray would like to know. You mentioned that toxic masculinity isn't a thing. I mean, words are a thing if you use words to be a thing. So that's not exactly what I meant. I tend to see it like saying cheeseburger. Not all masculinity is toxic. Not all burgers have cheese, but there are traits. Man up, hide your emotions. Be the breadwinner, never ask for help. They're often associated with men and masculinity that are problematic. The term problematic is adorable. My wife is an MD and makes more money than me. The number of times I've been asked how that makes me feel is mind boggling. Okay. Thank you for the question. This is a great question. Why are we so preoccupied with the conversation around gender. Can anybody venture a guess as to why? Because I have a theory. And my theory is the powers that be, the very, very rich people, the political class, the uh, business class, the goddamn blood-sucking lawyers want to keep us divided. There we have it. Yes, another distraction. Thank you. Chat knows where I was going. So, the more we pay attention to the things that separate us from each other, the easier we are to be controlled. The easier we are to stay enslaved. So where does that apply to the concept of toxic masculinity? Or the concept of the patriarchy? Or any of this new religious bullshit? Um, well, ooh, I lose an eight. I didn't want to lose an eight. Uh, yeah, that's fine. But now I'm going to go under 12 when black hits my one. Right? And white doesn't give themselves an easy take next turn. That's doubly bad for white. Why would you do that? Okay. Um, so the answer to the question is, if you associate, what was the example you used? If you associate traits like man up, hide your emotions with healthy masculinity, you're doing a false equivalency, right? A healthy man integrates his emotion into his being. A healthy man says, yes, I have feelings. Yes, I feel love. Yes, I feel sad. Yes, I feel horny. Yes, I feel angry right now. I'm a man. And that's normal. And that's okay. I accept myself, right? As soon as you say man up and hide your emotions, that's not toxic masculinity. It's a false sense of that that is what a man looks like because it just isn't. You can call me a duck. Maybe I'll even quack for you, but I don't have to believe your bullshit. Okay, we're doing good. Pete sounds like JBP and I'm okay with it. I'm me. I'm just me, guys. Quack for us. Quack, 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 quack. What's up? Elvira, great mindset. Thank you. What's up, little Grimmy Gaming? Yes, you're live. Found your winter FFA last night and to watch the whole thing. Like my demeanor and style. Welcome, guys. Welcome to the show. All right. Well, that would be the third time that the red player has hit my stack. So I wouldn't, I would never suicide because people hate it when I do that, though. People hate it when I do that. Okay. Thank you for the prime sub, Mir Meeper. And thank you for the bits, Mallory. You guys support? Very much appreciated. Thank you, thank you. Not trying to keep white under 12 territories. I made sure to do that the entire time, but I am trying to hold 12 territories myself. Let's give him one more chance.
Archie Cargo. Yeah, your window FFA popped off in the algorithm. I've been seriously enjoying the videos. Finally able to catch a stream. Welcome, guys. Only watch DV and more. Finally able to catch a Pete stream. Pog, love your YouTube videos and started risk because of you. See what I'm saying, guys? We're going to get this game going. We're going to get more butts in the situation. We have more people in the tournament. I'm hoping you all sign up for Spud's Risk Legends tournament. I want to see it as big and bad as ever. If you're able to help us, give some support. Spud's tournament is sponsored. So if anyone wants to throw a couple bucks into the pool for the prizing, that would be amazing. Let's, let's, uh, let's get a little fucking juice, juice to squeeze. You know what I'm saying, guys? Why not? Why not? Just a little bit. Couldn't hurt. Make it worth everyone's while. When does the Spud? When does the tournament sign up start? We have him in the chat. The man himself. When does the tournament sign up start? This next season. We are currently in week six of eight for the Risk World Championships on the main server. When does Risk Legends start? October tenth to October twenty third is the sign up, ladies and gentlemen. You heard it here first. I can't wait for Risk Legends either. Gonna be a blast. I, I want Maddie in my ear for the promo. Maddie was doing these badass fucking promos. You want to be a legend? Do you have what it takes? Sorry, I'm, I'm doing a shitty Maddie, but uh, you, you guys know what I'm saying. A shitty Maddie impression. Ooh, you're card blocking white. White's not going to like that very much. What's up? I'm a narrow risk streamer. Oh, baby. Doing great. Am I organizing a tournament? I am helping promote. That's kind of my strength in this community, right? I mean, I'm, I'm pretty good with organizational stuff, but also um, I'm just so busy, right? So I'm, I'm happy to promote Risk Legends. I'm happy to promote Risk World Championships. Um, and we go from there. The GM tournament as well. What's that thing in the bottom? That's the Blitz slider. So it's pretty complicated to describe what it does. So Balance Blitz rounds the top 15% and the bottom 15% of the probability distribution, uh, bottom 15 down to zero, top 15 up to 100. So anything 85% and up gets rounded to 100% roll. Similarly, anything 15% and under gets rounded to zero. Balance Blitz also helps in a situation where uh, if you're over 50%, it helps you. If you're under 50%, it hurts you. Um, so what can I tell you about all of that? There's also a problem with it. It's broken in a fundamental way. So you end up with a situation where if I roll this 168 into a 1, I'm not going to do it because I don't want to lose the troops, but you might actually lose a bunch more than just a single. Whereas you get really good odds rolling a 4v1, you get 100% odds, you just pop it. So I lost a troop, but I wouldn't lose three or four. It wouldn't make any sense, right, for 100 plus troops to lose more than one pretty much ever, but just because of the way the odds are skewed. Um, so that's what the blitz slider is being used for. You put a certain, you blitz a certain amount of troops into the stack rather than your whole stack. Stop leaning on your back. I'm not actually leaning. It's just... Oh, it fucking hurts, man. I don't know what I did. You want to see a stretch? Oh, we can do a stretch today. What are we stretching? What are we stretching, guys? Oh, my wrist. My wrist is fucked. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Feels good to stretch. Oh, my God. This is what happens when you get old, guys. Be very careful. Just don't, just don't do it. It's not... It's bad for your health. 
I think it might be fatal. <laughs> I did something though. I don't know what. How old am I? If you don't know, you can guess before I tell you, or someone in the chat tells you. Forty-four. We got a bunch of Van Agarwal says I am seventy-four. Got a lot of questions now. What was the one you asked? I don't know what song anymore, but I'm taking suggestions for the redeem. Um, let me think of something for you, Rue. You're you're all over the you're all over the map with that, huh? Do I have anything on my list of songs for karaoke? Um. How do you feel about uh, a Jackson Brown track? I'm 39 years old. 39. You owe an OG flex. I'm not even fucking... Oh, I can't even flex right now. Flex okay, huh? Oh, yeah. Looking sharp this morning, ladies and gentlemen. Woo! Feels good. Feels good to... Oh, yeah, look at those shoulders. Oh, my God. Just for you, Spudley. Just for you. Oh, boy, so Jack Brown. <laughs> I love you guys, man. Do the show just to stroke my fucking ego. <laughs> oh, you're too kind to me, ladies and gentlemen. Too kind. Oh, you're heading out, Mallory? Thanks for hanging out. Have a great day. If you want to watch her play some Risk Poorly, go check out Mallory's channel on YouTube. Before she goes, I might as well do a shout-out. Um, let me get that Poorly Played Risk shout-out for you. The channel is called Poorly Played Risk. This is Mallory Lynn recently minted grand master go give her a follow on youtube she'd love to have you and have yourself a great day madame how about you do frankie valley Ooh, you want to hear frankie valley i could do it we're, we're gonna let rue decide does rue like the idea of i got two i got two options for you i got frankie valley um oh what a night or which is gonna be a lot of falsetto or i got jackson brown the pretender and you can decide, Mr. Rue, which of those two you'd like. Fortunately, the YouTube audience will not get this. So I'll, I'll pop on the, the karaoke at the end of the stream. For copyright reasons. Of course. Oh, Neil pointed out that I missed his question. Yes, I did miss your question, bro. Okay, sorry, not intentionally, but thank you for reminding me. Neo777 would like to ask this is a good one, too. If you could talk to an all-knowing being and only ask a few questions, what would they be? If I could talk to an all-knowing being and I was sure that it was an all-knowing being, I would not ask any questions. Getting back onto our conversation about free will and... The, the logical chain of physical science. If it is the case that I could know for sure anything, that would remove so much of the beauty and the mystery of life that I would not want to know. So there's my answer. It's a short one, but it's a comprehensive one. Callie Graben. Pete, you talked about freedom before. What is your conception of freedom? Freedom for or freedom from? Ah, we're talking about... Uh, basic liberty theory. So John Locke said that we should be 
in franchise to be as free as possible up to and including when our freedom impinges upon the freedom of others when our liberty cuts up against that of another um is it freedom to or freedom from freedom to freedom from i don't see a distinction right freedom is a virtue i want to be able to be the one who gets to decide um was that just a manual roll <laughs> just a single manual roll into my stack very cute okay sorry sorry guys chat's moving too fast i have no idea what either is so someone convinced me why i should pick one of the options i don't know gorillas no i'm sorry rue i'm sorry to let you down um i'm working on a list of songs that i can say to people this is my list of available options so at least i won't um have this keep coming up because like i can't sing everything and you guys don't know what i know without me telling you so we'll we'll figure that one out not even lottery numbers no i don't want lottery numbers from an all-knowing being because i have learned that something given has no value right i want to earn it myself i want to earn all of my successes I, and i don't mind it being hard i love the challenge right i'm i feel successful in my life now and part of that is born of hard work that's my answer uh knowing all is boring says gando yeah exactly pete what do you think of male circumcision i'm not a fan so as a jewish person i was circumcised i think in my first week of life um and i'll tell you just imagine what we are designed what what we are designed for <laughs> right we have a shower you can wash your dick guys like i don't know why thousands of years later this archaic tradition remains i didn't consent to this either guys no one asked me if i wanted elective surgery as an infant there's my answer to you digio I was not consulted. Pete, if you could go back, there was one moment in time. Go back and change without knowing how it would affect my future. Ooh, um, what would I do? I don't regret anything. So no, I don't think I would do anything differently. I don't regret anything. I'm, I'm, I own the man I have become, right? I've been forged. I wouldn't trade a second of that suffering. Because I'm proud of who I am. Hey, Pete, what are your plans for selling the lawn care business? And do you think it could be run out of province? No, it's a it's a job, right? You need a well, I mean, you could if you found labor to do it. Um, my plans currently are, I think it makes more sense for me to do snow plowing this winter and then worry about selling it in the springtime. It's because I'm trying to put as much money together as possible for reasons that I have explained to you guys before. And we don't know, we don't need to get into in too much depth but i've gone through a fairly significant life change in the last couple of months and uh we are rebuilding from that now stradney yo pete been watching your youtube you were suggested happy to catch you your good stuff downloaded the game and i'm having fun cheers and thanks for the introduction welcome to risk stradney welcome welcome I love how we can talk about John Locke and philosophical beliefs and then seamlessly transition to male circumcision. Dude, I can fucking talk about anything. I think the fact that you guys want to talk to me is the fun surprise for me, right? Like, it's such a blessing to have 278 folks that want to hang out with me right now. I can't imagine. You can imagine, like, my elation here. Also, how are we going to end this game? Does anyone have an idea? What color would Sart play? Probably black. <laughs> no one got to kill Pete. Yeah, they indeed they do. Escape needs a suicide. Eh, it'll come. It, it always does.
Just give me a reason. Yeah, oh, you're saying I'm going to be the one to do it? I can't, though. People give me so much shit, Spud, in the comments. They're like, Pete, you fucking wasted my time. I watched this for many, many hours, and then you just fucking suicide. It's like, yeah, well, he had it coming. Maybe I got bored. I don't know. It's fucking classic fix, you know? It is what it is. You could card block black and force him to break white, couldn't you? I mean, no one is forced to take a card. X, X, X to red. Hey, Pete, I started watching you all your YouTube videos and saw you on Twitch. Saw my stream. Welcome. Do I need more caffeine? I always need more caffeine. I'm running low. What I actually need is some lunch. We're 35 minutes over the line, and I got to sing a song. He rolls and fails. This time it's going to stop rolling singles, bro. All right, we get a break. All right, we get a slam. Let's go. Something is happening. Oh, baby. Bad for white, bad for Pete, good for black. Oh, baby. Hey, genius. Thank you for the prime sub. What is my favorite meal? Crab's legs. Someone had to. I agree. I love green, too. It's, let's get this game going. I fully fucking agree. All good. No hard feelings. Someone asked me earlier, like, how do you deal with like two hours into a game? You're so invested, and then you get suicided into? It's just a game, guys. Just ram into green. I can't. Pete, it's been an honor. Yes, sir. It always is. Hey, Pete, this is my first stream, and I've been wanting to ask you if you've ever played any over-the-board tournaments. I have not. Um, but I would. I'm not opposed to it at all. I definitely... Ooh, we see a slam into black. See a big slam into black. No. What's happening now? Do we also see a slam into green? Yes. Okay. No one breaks black. Boo Griefus! Thank you for the prize. Oh, that's a great name. Boo Griefus! I love it. Oh, are we hitting? Are we hitting? We are! We're, we're slow rolling. Are we actually hitting? No. Up to and including the point where... Right. Right, 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 right. Okay. Black has a slider on two. Griefus says, I don't play Risk anymore, but I still enjoy watching you play. Thank you, man. Rorks would like to know, is the aim of the game to get one tile to a massive amount and then just overpower the players? Classic Fixed is a primarily psychological game where you have to figure out what your other play what the other players in the game are willing to tolerate 
Um, how aggressive can you push your luck? And it's a very slow, very methodical game once the game stabilized. We started with six players. We ended up in a very even four-player game for a while. But now the tension has broke, and I think I find myself in a strong lead. And the only question is, can we leverage that to a win? Green is also playing very strategic. Ooh, I'm getting slammed. He's manualing. Manual rolling the stack. Okay. It looks like this game is mine. Yeah, it looks like this game is mine. Of course, the dice don't default back to Blitz. Thank you, guys. All right. We're going to do a karaoke redeem to end the stream. And is anyone going live? Is Kilted here? Who's live? Who's playing? JJ's live, if we could rate out. JJ at a hundred points after five rounds, a stellar performance. Good game, everybody. How long were we playing this one for? Quite a bit, eh? JJ and BSD. Okay. Raid BSD? Sure. Happily. Let's do that. Um, we'll throw on one song so you guys can, uh, Ruin your poor little ears. I'll sign off for the YouTube video now. Um, if you are interested in getting better at the game of Risk, I invite you to subscribe to my channel and come along the ride with me. I have a daily release on YouTube and I stream on Twitch frequently. Click the schedule button for the next show. Join my Discord if you want notifications for when I go live on Twitch. Get in on the next stream for all of you on the path to world domination. Good games and good luck.